Hello everyone, this is Ether Dragon, and welcome back to another episode of Fire Emblem Heroes. So, again, like usual, we don't have the final result for the week on defense, because we can still lose up to 40 more lift, but it won't matter. We're... We've already clinched tier 26 shenanigans, so pretty straightforward, but... Quite the interesting teams, I guess. Uh, this is definitely an interesting team. Not... Like, clearly they're trying to use maybe Lilna for hit and run, maybe Roy for tanking some things, maybe dual Ephraim, but not really. And they have Larum to... dance and support and stuff, but, uh... I'm not entirely sure if it's the greatest thing, and they do this, which is kind of weird. I would have just danced Lona to break the Bright Shrine, but that's probably just me. And then they do this, which is fine, I guess. <laughs> kind of weird, but it gets the job done. And they're just taking a lot of time. They go in like this, no idea why you would ever do that, and then they just kind of go in like this. Uh, which is kind of weird. <laughs> I'm really not sure what they were trying to do here, but obviously it's not going to work very well. We kill on F from there. We dance to actually kill P and E, which is kind of interesting. Seleph unable to double Lilina. Heals Dirt Man, but I mean, what do you expect? At this point, we have shenanigans going on, and we have Selif here going 1v1 against Roy, and he's in vantage range, so incredibly awkward. Not sure why they did that. I'm, wait, wasn't Roy here? They could have. What's that? Maybe they didn't notice. Maybe they just want to go ladder. Not sure. They could have won that match. <laughs> Although taking three losses still. Order is definitely a thing in ether raids. Sometimes I screw up on offense because of it. Like I was thinking about recording the last match of this season, but it honestly wasn't that interesting. It was super repetitive as many of my matches are just abusing level 6 bolt tower now which allows me to which allowed me in that matchup to one round KO a Celeph because losing 35 HP is a little bit <laughs> much and so at that point relatively easy cleanup and I just exploited their unit placement. So it, it was pretty straightforward for me to pick up the win against that team. Yeah, I, I don't know. At, the, at this point, my offense strategy is if you're not super countering field buffs, you, you you likely can't quite beat or can't quite beat me on when I'm on offense, but that's kind of eh. to a degree. If you spam enough hardy bearing, it also becomes quite difficult. But some people don't do it quite right, as you you might have seen in some older ether raids offense videos. But it should be a pretty straightforward win for them at this point. So there's, there's definitely a lot of problems with my defense still, of course. This um, season definitely is not representative of <laughs> what should be happening. Because for the most part, these should be straightforward wins for a lot. Of, like, looking at this team, you, I, you should probably expect no deaths, but... Um, yeah. <laughs> First of all, why would you ever do this? Uh, I don't know. Don't question it. <laughs> Not sure that's the greatest way to test the bolt trap. 
but and like technically speaking you don't need to ever deal with the bolt trap for the most part i believe so it's just kind of question marks all around like this seems okay you know but then they um they're moving their units up closer and so that's uh, not great for the Seleth matchups. And so now Seleth is kind of saying hello from the other side. So what they should be doing is, first of all, not baiting with Itsuki like that, but um, just in general, this this is a weird thing that my defense does, because if you don't break the tactic string, you can guarantee almost always sell if moves down like that. But it's, it's really strange. And then they do this, which clearly isn't going to work. There's no reason why this would ever work. So, kill an Xtsuki, kill an Peony, and Bravike barely lives against Sothis. But he's not going to live another round, so it's over at this point. But this it definitely didn't need to go this way. They could have just broken the panic manner and do the usual thing people have done against my defense. But uh, I, I already I just I just show I'm just showing all the <laughs> matches like usual because why not? For the meme records, like at this point, there's so much footage <laughs> of replays that uh, everything pretty much seems the same now. <laughs> uh, there's not much to commentate on because it's like, well, they either made the right play or a good, decent play or whatever. I'm definitely seeing a lot more people use disarm trap and. For sure, Disarm Trap definitely is pretty strong, but it's not like... Still, for the most part, if you're actually trying... This was not a good play, by the way, clustering all the units together like this. That just never sounds like a good idea. Um, but... In general, it's like... If you're going to... What was I saying? <laughs> In general, on offense, if you have a strong enough strategy, you really shouldn't need disarm trap. Because if you have, there's, there's super niche matchups where it definitely helps some specific strategies to have. Uh, what you might call it? Definitely helps them out to have. I am such at a loss for words right now. Brain dead out of ten. <laughs> but if your if your strategies your across your five teams are strong enough in general, you shouldn't need disarm trap to win most matchups. Again, there's some super niche matchups where it definitely helps to be able to just ignore traps altogether, especially high level bolt traps and whatnot. Definitely useful. But Disarm Trap's one of those things, uh, you might have seen... I'm kind of surprised I haven't seen it yet against my defense. Maybe it's because I have Cellar on my defense, but... There's a strategy where people use air. This is a light season strategy. They use air and just go ahead and throw a Disarm Trap on her and... Basically, just player phase in the units and run stuff like Fury 4 or whatever to get chip damage. Lift your Berg also is their chip damage, but some people use other weapons or whatever. But the idea is you drop to Wings of Mercy range and so you can combo off of that. So, with Disarm Trap, that definitely helps out against teams that tend to leave their maps or defenses that tend to have more open maps. This obviously wasn't a good idea. Panic Manor out of 10, <laughs> but they're still gonna win. It, it, but we, we got we got enough kills to 
get a decent, <laughs> decent ratio on defense. Yeah, the Wings of Mercy Gale Force or whatever, it depends on what you're using, but it's definitely a pretty strong strategy simply because the wide, especially the wide open defenses is what I was trying to say. The wide open defenses, they don't have many structures around or blockading the front or whatever, so you can't manipulate the AI to as high of a degree as other defenses like mine. Mine is a prime example of how people can just manipulate the AI to split my team in half and depending if you're prepared for that or not that can result in a pretty easy win for you or you can just get absolutely cornered and memed on which is which has been happening more recently, kind of confused about that. Also seeing more Brave Ikes without Brave Lucinas, which is kind of interesting. I'm guessing people are running into more and more strategies that are starting to counter the good old Brave Ike, Brave Lucina combinations, so they're just straying away from using them, or they're using her during Astra season and don't have two copies of her to use for both seasons, but I don't know, at the end of the day, it's, it's kinda eh. You go for this play, which is perfectly fine. Um, there's nothing really wrong with this play at all. They have enough HP to dodge the Panic Manor, so that's, it that, it's, wouldn't be too significant, but I mean, it's, it's moderately significant, I guess. And here we're just seeing everyone just miss the kills. <laughs> but unfortunately, Brave Ike cannot handle all the attacks, and so Ripper Reno, they just go ahead and ladder out here, which I, I guess is somewhat reasonable. <laughs> but yeah, doing the damage calcs for stuff like that, kind of tedious, which is kind of why a lot of people don't do it. <laughs> here, this person just has something decent, aka what you want, and they're going to use it decently, and so that's going to let them win, but I've already watched this replay, so I'm like, yeah, I don't know if they uh, damage calc this out, but you'll, you'll see what happens. So yeah, what was I, I, I can't ever, fin I can't ever finish what I'm trying to say in any of these videos. But those open wide defenses, where there's not a lot of structures, they tend to place their trap somewhere, and of course, that discourages people from just immediately moving in to attack their units, because maybe they'll hit the real heavy trap, and that won't be very good. Um, So, having Disarm Trap allows you to go straight in. And unfortunately here, Roy lives by a sliver here, but... I mean... I, I don't know if they calculated it, but if they did, kudos if not. I mean, it's kind of just the normal case of what happens when you don't have all your defense units maxed out. Which is kind of why this... Another reason why this defense is kind of eh. Because... I'm using quite a few units who aren't plus 10, but I will be getting sell up to plus 10 pretty soon. I think I'm just going to stick with plus speed on him for now. I, I do have a plus attack copy, but nah. <laughs> I, I don't know. Everyone kind of goes plus attack, so maybe I could make plus speed usable, but and for in the in the context of Aether Rage defense. If I'm going to go plus speed, I need to actually invest more speed into him. But uh, Arena, no real point in trying. <laughs> I could stay in tier 21 if I dump tons of feathers to build up a unit. Because honestly, this week, using Alphonse's bonus, it's pretty fun. I actually, if, if you didn't know, when I'm not tryharding in an arena video 
on these random matches, I still try to feed the, my bonus unit all the kills. So that's why some weeks <laughs> you'll see that I, did, I haven't been getting, or I didn't get a good score from the week of random matches because <laughs> it was just too difficult. But yeah, um, the new arena, the arena change, of course, makes arena definitely more feasible for some particular bonus units to get all the bonus points. But at the same time, it also encouraged a lot more people to actually quote unquote try an arena. So it's kind of a double edged sword. But at the end of the day, we'll be back if there's more replays, and if not, we'll go straight to the results as usual. Also getting pretty close to the uh, max cap on feathers, so I gotta be careful about that. Alrighty, gotta be careful about feathers, but I think we're okay. Worst case scenario, I just have to start promoting units. Uh, as of this video, I'll be streaming my summoning shenanigans um, on March 1st, because Either today or tomorrow, the Legendary Heroes banner trailer is coming out, and I'll be going ham on that banner, most likely. It's basically a 99% chance we go in. 
They'd have to do quite a bit to make sure I don't go for it at this point. But yeah, I'll be streaming it on my Twitch channel, but I highly do not recommend you watch it live. <laughs> I'll, I, I will upload a VOD of the stream like I did last time. If you want to watch it, prefer probably at a faster speed because it's going to be a super long stream and whatnot, but pretty normal shenanigans for this week. Thanks for watching. As always, this is Ether Dragon, and hope to see you all next time. Bye.